Hi everybody, Russell Markham here from VectVest. Please note there, you can find out all of our licensing details there, and you can also refer to our financial services guide per our website, just on the second slide here. Any advice is general advice, does not consider your personal objectives, financial situations or needs. You should consider whether the advice is suitable for you and your personal circumstances. Past performance, not a reliable indicator of future performance. Forecast back tests used or discussed in this presentation are intended as guide only and actual results may be affected by known or unknown risks and uncertainties and therefore may differ materially from, from the results ultimately achieved. Okay, with that said, I'm going to jump into VectVest and you can see here, as of time recording, 1 February, we're still in a confirmed down, our most conservative of all of our timing signals. So uh, we can see that we need to be careful at the moment. The market is down, plenty of red lights, but look at that, just starting to transition now into yellow lights. So there's some transition taking place. Red, you know, we need to be careful. Yellow means it's transitioning, and then green lights mean, of course, happier times, good times, right? So at the moment, the color guard is neutral. Uh, VectorFest advocates caution when buying stocks at this time. If I look at the MTI, you can see there we hit a low point there on the 27th of January at 0 0.6 and it's just slowly creeping up 0 0.62, 0 0.66, 0 0.71. If I move over here into graphs and all I've done here is I've just gone and put on market timing and then I've put in a horizontal line at the 0 0.6 level. All right, so you can see there 0.6, I've put it in there at the 0.6 level and I want to pull it back over time just to show you something interesting here. So statistically, over the years in Australia, the market typically finds its bottom at 0.6 on the MTI. And if you go back over the years, here you can see during the global financial crisis, uh, here we went down as low as, uh, where was it here? But we went down to about 0.44, I think it was, at one of its lowest points. So you can scroll in over the years and, and have a look. So if you scroll in here, you can see, here we are, here's one uh, there, 0.42, and uh, here was another low point there, 0.45, okay, so very low scores on the scale of 0 to 2. Now, just to recap, of course, the MTI looks at the underlying trend of the market. So a score above 1 tells us that the underlying trend of the market is up, and a score below 1 notes that the underlying trend of the market is down. So we can see at the moment, here we are. You can see there we're coming in at 0.71. We're below one. The underlying trend of the market is down. If I scroll in a bit, zoom in a bit here, you can see there we are. We've come to that magical 0.6 level. And the further it falls below, the more that market itches to rally to the upside. And we've seen that so many times in the past where it goes well below 0.6. All right. So here we've just kind of come in and just touched it. Uh, time will tell whether we wave down another leg before potentially coming back up. Nobody can predict, but we can certainly look what's in front of us. Statistically speaking, there we are at that magical 0.6 level. So it's fair to say that the market is looking to find a bottom. It may very well have found its bottom and it's about to turn around. All right, so the next question then is, well, if this is the market bottom, what strategies could we look to do for bottom fishing type strategies? So what do I mean by that? Bottom fishing is a it's, a, it's more of a high risk type strategy. It's where you're looking to jump into the market as the market turns around. Now, of course, if you're using conservative signals like the confirmed up signal, as that market turns around and you get the confirmed up signal, well, then it's not an aggressive type strategy because you're being fairly conservative and using conservative market timing signals as such. But if you're trying to jump in before some of the more conservative signals, then of course it's erring more on the side of an aggressive type strategy. So with that said, let's have a look what we could look potentially to do in terms of the strategy to get our shopping lists ready. Now again, please, this is not advice. Do speak to your financial professional. This is how we use VectorVest to identify what we believe is oversold positions in the market. All right, so the way we're going to do it is we're going to look for companies where the price has fallen quite a bit, 
but where the earnings are continuing to power up because we know that where earnings rise, share prices rise. So if you can find companies currently where the price has fallen but the earnings are still holding steady, well then you know on average that of course those companies are going to start tracking back up in price because price and earnings are highly correlated. Furthermore, this is interesting, we know that on average the earnings in Australia are still holding up. So in the essay they had noted viewers, if we go to viewers and watch list viewer, so viewers watch list viewer and if I go to S&P ASX the group and I go to the ASX 200, it's about 83-84% of the total market and uh, as always we've done this a few times, it's always uh, worthwhile repeating this exercise, you can see all 200 odd stocks in there. Uh, come down to the bottom here, right click, view watch list average graph and if I pull this onto graph here you can see I was drawing some lines, the market was falling yet the, the, the earnings were holding steady. Right, so the earnings are holding steady, your technicals are falling, so you've got falling technicals, your relative timing, the technicals are falling, all right, but your earnings are holding up and that bodes well for when the market turns around because as the technicals start firing back up in the market and your earnings are holding steady, well, happy days. What you don't want to see is you don't want to see, you know, the technicals firing up the market starting to climb up, but the earnings on average continuing to decline because that to me is a danger signal. You can't continue to have companies going up on average if they're not being driven by those earnings, sustained by the earnings. So uh, all the ingredients is there for a turnaround, a nice bounce in the market, time will tell. So with that said, what can we do to start getting our shortlists ready? Well, we don't need to go any further than where we are currently. We're going to pick on the ASX 200 and we'll also pick on the ASX 300. Now, to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into our powerful tool called Unisearch. So if I click on Unisearch here, and I'm going to go down to Searches Bottom Fishing. All right, so the group I'm going to open up here is called Searches Bottom Fishing. You've got the ASX 300, and then you've also got the ASX 200. Let's click on the 200 uh, to begin with. So it's up to you. Do you want to select the ASX 200, or do you want to pick on the ASX 300? For today's exercise, how about this? I'll just stick with the ASX 300 because it makes up a large portion of the overall market. All right, so what I've done here is I've clicked on the ASX 300. It's on the bottom fishing folder. And here's the magic, right? So it says, find me the stocks in the ASX 300. Make sure that there's good volume, at least 100,000 trades or more a day, where the price is greater than or equal to a dollar. And then what it does is it sorts them by RT ascending. Right, find me the companies with the lowest RTs in the A6300 because these are the companies that have been sold down the most. So if I bring this up over here, you'll see here RT. You can see there RT in ascending order. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to graph, let's say, the top 50. Right, so you can title up or down. So I'll say top 50. In comes my graph here. And let's just uh, make it a little bit easier to see here take all this off for now and all I'm looking for is I'm looking for earnings rising I want to see earnings rising while the price falling we know these are by RT in ascending order so we know that the technicals of these are on these given stocks are down uh, but let's see can we find a stock here we go where the earnings are coming up yet the price is falling and what I want to do is I just want to go a little bit back in time and I want to see a correlation between rising earnings and rising share price. Not quite enough history on that one, so I'll move that one along. Let's keep going. Just pull in just a bit here. All right, it's worth spending a little bit of time because you're going to pick on some great potential prospects. All right, so it's got to jump out at me. Aha, P&I, Pinnacle Investment, look at that. Earnings are coming up. Yes, they have sort of gone sideways a bit, but still going up. Yet the price has fallen quite a bit. So there's a big divergence there. Earnings going up and holding steady, yet price coming off. Is this one where it has been a wee bit oversold? Okay. Keep going a little bit more here. So you see what I'm after. That's what I'm going to be looking for. So here we are. Look, earnings coming up, coming up. Price has come off. So here's another great one, AEF. So I want to make sure there's a little bit of track record behind it. And uh, 
looking for that divergence. All right, so I'll move on a little bit more. It's really got to jump out at you. Aha, BWX, look at that. Earnings are coming up. As earnings were coming up here, price came up. And then in subsequent days here, price has fallen away while earnings have held up. Let's pull it back just a wee bit over time as well, just to see how it sort of stood up over time. Pull it back a wee bit more. So here we are. Earnings came up, price went up, earnings came off. Okay, so you can see the correlations in play here. So this one here might be one that makes your shortlist as well. So BWX, here we go. And I'll keep going. Look at this one here. Uh, I'm not quite convinced in this one here. Ansel, the earnings are sort of continuing to fall, even though price is continuing to fall. I'm not, not really sort of seeing them holding steady. It depends on the time frame you're looking at, but I think it's fair to say it's been sliding for, for a wee bit of time here. Okay, so it's worth going through this and picking on the given one. So there's three. All right, so there's A600. Uh, let's go to the A6200. All right, so here's the A600, and let's run the search. And again, I'm just looking at the top 50, of course, if you're prepared to go through all 300, but this is just a, a very quick way of doing it. Okay, so here we are, A6200, and I'll just grab the top 50 again here, and let's see, can we find those correlations, or should I say divergences? Uh, this one's interesting, look at that, earnings are coming up, price is falling, Go back a bit over time. I'm not seeing a very convincing earnings profile nonetheless. Might be one I put on the short list just to uh, consider down the track, but uh, it hasn't broken out enough for my liking. Aha, that's one we found on the A6300. So that one jumped out. Keep going a, a bit more here. There we are. G-O-R. Uh, earnings coming up. Price has sort of been falling. Is this one a wee bit oversold? All right, so I'll make a, a note of that one there, G-O-R. Okay, keep going a bit more. Ah, this one here, C-U-V, look at that. Uh, that's a really good one that uh, jumped out at me. The, the earnings are coming up quite nicely, yet the price has fallen away. Has it been oversold? All right, same with this one here, R-W-C, look at that one. That really jumps out. Earnings firing up, but price has been coming off in recent times here. All right. Uh, let's see, keep going a bit more here. REH, you can see over here the earnings are sort of powering up, yet you know has it been significantly oversold. I can't uh, make that decision for you, but I can certainly give you the tools so you can decide. All right, so these are the ones that jumped out at me, for example. So what I'll do here is I'll now uh, go to my viewers and I'm going to go to my watch lists, my watch lists. And let's create a new watch list here. And I'll give it the name, how about this, uh, Bottom Fishing. All right, so Bottom Fishing Stocks to Consider uh, for myself, for example. All right, so I click on Add. Here we go. That'll then populate it. And I can then put in the symbols. Okay, so uh, the ones I've got just quickly on the fly here. Now, of course, you can spend a lot more time and do this uh, a lot more thoroughly. I'm just showing you the methodology. All right, G-O-R, we had C-U-V, we had uh, R R W C. there we are, and R-E-H. Here we go. So here were just a few that I've grabbed. And let's go down to the bottom here, right click, view watch list average. So this is the combined total. Now look at that. So the earnings are powering up on average. Yes, they've gone a little bit sideways here, but still they're holding steady. So earnings are doing what we want them to do. They're going up, yet the price has come off. Big divergence there because effectively you've got earnings doing this and you've got price doing that. So if you line them up in the same time period, effectively you've got a sort of earnings sort of coming up and holding steady, yet you've got uh, price falling. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for from a, a bottom fishing type strategy. I'll just right click, let's change the style on this one as well. Uh, that's what we're looking for. So there you go. And then you can throw in some additional parameter sets in here as well. Uh, I've just uh, putting in an extra few there just to double check. Value, so price of 1072, value of 768. Uh, it's neither here nor there. I'm, I'm not overly concerned with that. So it's uh, uh, fairly close in terms of price and value. If I look at earnings growth rate, Holding there at 22%, that's uh, phenomenal. 
and looking at sales there very nice you're seeing a big uh, uplift there in the sales uh, that's what you want to see companies that are growing their sales and then let's have a look at the net profit margin look at that net profit margins coming up so it's no surprises you're seeing the earnings coming up there as well so all these key things are, are stacking up and I'll just uh, clear all those drawings there so uh, you can see you know it was going up and then it's recently come off uh, but earnings have continued to power up so you you're seeing you're seeing that divergence and uh, that's what bottom fishing is about it's finding those companies that have been heavily oversold here's our relative timing look at that falling away yet earnings holding steady as that market turns around when we get our next DEW or confirmed signal I expect on average those stocks to move up with the market because their earnings are going up all right so can you build a watch list where you're seeing a nice divergence between earnings coming up yet the price was coming off go through the ASX 200 the ASX 300 for example the ASX 100 you know use that bottom fishing strategy there right so search is bottom fishing it's all there for you and uh, you then generate your watch list and uh, put the, your watch list together and see what you've got and then monitor that carefully to see when the market turns around and see what takes place hope you got a lot out of this week's essay until next week bye for now